for this video. I was going to cover a little bit more about the turbo and carburetor itself. Just a few details on uh, some of the unique parts. Um, we'll start with this uh, check and relief valve. This valve, uh, this valve is for pressurizing the turbo rocket fluid tank, which would sit kind of up on the driver's side fender. When you boost, it pressurizes the manifold and come through the check valve, pressurizing that tank. Uh, the tank would stay pressurized till you turned the car off because the check valve wouldn't allow the pressure to go back into the manifold. The top side of this valve is a relief valve to where if you decided to boost with the engine still cold, everything's still cold under the hood, the turbo rocket fluid is cold, the tank's cold. Uh, if you boost and build about six and a half pounds of pressure in the tank, and then you kept driving, and now the tank's getting really hot, but pressure is going to expand. Uh, it's going to build more heat, which creates more pressure. Some of that pressure needed to be relieved back down to about six and a half, seven pounds of pressure. And so the top portion of this would relieve any pressure above about six and a half, seven pounds. Uh, I got one of those here that's a part. What it would do is pressure would, from the fluid tank, would build up into here and it wouldn't go down because of the check valve. So that pressure would push up on this diaphragm which would make this button Let's see if I can get it closer it would make that diaphragm come up as that diaphragm comes up that button hits this cap well we can get it here can you see it? But that opens that up to relieve that excess pressure. So uh, out of the back side of that would have a rubber hose going up to your depressurization valve. Uh, I covered that valve in the uh, fluid injection video. But uh, basically when you turn the car off, you've got vacuum on this port and you've got pressure on this port. Uh, when you turn the car off, that vacuum is relieved, allowing the tank pressure to vent. That way your turbo rocket fluid tank doesn't stay pressurized. So then, uh, one of the other things, 63 turbos were all silver. Uh, uh, sometime in history, this one's been probably rebuilt, and they painted this section black. But, uh, but originally the 63s would have been, been silver. Most of the 62s were red. Not all 62s, but the very vast majority of the 62s were red turbos. Um, something else unique on this one. Uh, this is from a manual transmission car. Uh, when it's a four-speed or a three-speed three manual, it had this vacuum port. This vacuum port was for the vacuum advance on the distributor. When you had an automatic car, this setup here is for an automatic, you don't have that vacuum port. Um, for an automatic car, you had a manifold port. This would have been a T on an automatic car. And out this side of the T would have went to your vacuum advance. Uh, this side on four speed or three or uh, automatic, this side goes to your boost gauge on the console. Um, it just says if you're in vacuum or boost. And then uh, your glass bowl, it's just your typical glass bowl fuel filter. Um, let's see what else we got here. Here's another unique feature on four-speed cars, well, manual transmission cars, you had manual choke. 
and with a choke cable on automatic cars you had an automatic choke uh, why they did that I really don't know there's really no reason they couldn't have uh, made automatic chokes on manual transmission cars but uh, not really sure why they did that the only thing is you can't convert a manual transmission carburetor over to an automatic choke because the internal vacuum ports are different and, and you just they just don't cross over um, this canister here is called the boost limit control valve I, I touched on this valve a little bit in the injection video but what it does is if you run out of turbo rocket fluid then they didn't want the engine boosting because it, you're going to burn the motor up so uh, what happened is the float in the fluid metering valve would drop which directs pressure into here instead of injecting the fluid since you're out of fluid and whenever that is activated there's a secondary butterfly in here let's see if i can get this to focus and uh it'd make this secondary butterfly close which drastically redu reduces your performance and won't let it boost over one pound of pressure that way the uh you don't have detonation uh then you've got your your throttle return check uh, that just controls the very last little bit of travel as your throttle's closing just to prevent stalling uh, the wind down of the engine you could uh, stall the engine if it's winding down really fast and uh, this just keeps the throttle open for just a tiny oh probably not even a second uh, now this canister is called a throttle retarder uh, that dampens the throttle throughout the entire travel when you let off you can see it don't just snap all the way it, it just slows that travel down uh, literature says that that is for automatic transmissions to keep the throttle valve to the transmission from snapping closed uh, something about it being bad for the transmission those were found on automatic cutlasses and F-85s as well. But, uh, but on the jet fires, they are also on the four-speed or automatic cars. Uh, there's no literature to back this up, but I, I want to believe that they kept these on the jet fires, on the manuals as well, to keep the throttle from closing really quick. Um, if you was fully wound up on your turbo, pumping six and a half pounds of boost, and instantly let off the throttle, these are draw through carburetors. So if your throttle valve closed really quick, uh, this is your regular throttle valve here. Uh, if that closed really quick and you was still boosting really hard, I suspect it's gonna have some really funny vacuum. Uh, I would think it would it would pull a, a really hard vacuum if you did that. And just me speculating, I kind of wonder if maybe that's to prevent the sudden close of the throttle blade. But uh, but again, that's just me guessing. I I really can't say that for sure. The only the literature says are for automatic transmission throttle valves keep them from closing so fast um, what else we got here the uh, the oil supply line that comes right off your oil pump there's a, a line down there are external oil pumps on these 215s and it comes up and pressurizes right into here to pressurize your turbo bearings and then it gravity feeds back out of here down into a valve cover. Uh, for the, 
jet fire this back water port is specific the uh, regular 215 has this port but the jet fire adds this one um, they run uh, they run water from the cooling system up into the turbo and into the throttle body um, this this whole area inside the turbo has got a water jacket in there and uh, and like I say, there's a passage through the throttle body. It uh, comes in here and comes back out the bottom down underneath here and uh, would end up hooking back into that port here. Uh, what else we got? Well, I think that's pretty much all the little details here. Um, I touched on this in the... Uh, injection video also but this is the controller um, there's a spring and diaphragms in there uh, little shims and uh, usually from the factory these were less than six and a half pounds of boost but uh, you're safe up to six and a half pounds so generally we try to add some shims to them if if you're playing with them add shims to try to get the full six and a half pounds of boost uh, what that does is the the tighter you make the spring the more boost pressure it takes to open this bypass valve um, the boost it goes through straight through the turbine but when you get over the controlled amount then it opens the valve here and it'll bypass the turbine but really for the most part that's that's most of the unique unique things uh, I guess there is one other thing on on the choke. Not sure if that's going to zoom in well. This one's pretty rusty. Uh, automatic cars. It has a three-step cam to the choke, and on manual transmission cars, they just had two steps. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's really all I got for you. And, I'll see if I can add some details at a later time for more information on them. Got a few more. There's Jim Knoll rebuilt that turbo, which I need to build another carburetor for that one. I've got a four-speed rebuilt system here. and Another, I don't know who rebuilt it, but that's a rebuilt turbo it was rebuilt by some place in Canada I believe and some extra intake manifolds and extra turbos and extra air cleaners a few extra miscellaneous things a bunch of turbo rocket fluid but, uh, but anyway I'll catch you next time